Well, good morning. Okay, we can do better than that. We're in the house of the Lord. Good morning. My name's Rebecca, and I'm the discipleship director here at New Life, and it is just an honor to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. And we've missed gathering together live, but we're back, and it's a happy new year still. But maybe for some of you, that thought of a new year just kind of went out the window as soon as it happened. But I'm here to tell you God is good, and God is always at work. And it's funny, there's a joke around here that I'm a pretty quiet person unless you give me a microphone and I love to talk about Jesus. I do, and I don't know if it's good or bad for y'all, but last week, um, instead of being asked, I reached out and said, hey, can I be glue next week? Um, because last week I had the privilege of just sitting in the presence of the Lord intentionally for a few days. And anytime I do that, I'm just so impacted by just how good God is and how big he is. And church, 2023 is a big year here because the staff that God has called together with all of our weaknesses, with all of our strengths, with all of our goofiness and quirkiness and gifts and talents. We're just not willing to accept status quo. We're just not. God is too good for that and there are people hurting. So this year, we're going all in. So if you need to strap on a seatbelt, you better go ahead and do it because it, it, it's wide open. Um, this year is gonna be the year of service. And as soon as I say that, I don't want you to go ahead and, and close it at like, oh no. Here comes the church trying to fill up my calendar and get me to do a lot of stuff, because that is not it. But when last year we dug into discipleship and learned what it means to be a disciple. And to be a disciple, acts of service are immediately just come through you. Because when your life has been changed by God, you just can't help but give. You can't help but do. And so the church, we're going to come alongside you and provide you a wide variety of opportunities to enjoy that. But we're also going to encourage you in your neighborhoods and in your families, wherever you are, to serve. So we're glad you're here this morning. And today we've got a sermon series that's going to fire you up. Because God is huge. And the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside you, if you're an accepted believer, it changes things. So if you're joining us online or if you're in the room please hit the QR code and let us know you're here. We are a church family. That means we support one another. That means we come together and this is the place that we get fired up so we can go out there and do everything that God's asking us to do. So this morning, we're gonna worship our creator. We're gonna worship the king of all kings. So would you join us? And if you would stand, if you're able. My name is Victor Neal, I'm the worship arts director. And the first song of our being back together for 2023 is going to be a song called Send Me. Because of the year of service, let's all start this year in a posture of, God, I'm available to you. Can we all say that? God, I'm available to you. So whatever you want us to do, God, through your Holy Spirit, maybe this is the year when you were taking inventory of 2022 and the first weeks of 2023, you were making lists of, I want to be better here. I want to do this. I want to do that. I really want to take that step. Um, I hope during this song that you allow the Holy Spirit just to talk to you. There's a part of the song that we all sing together, and it goes, Here I am, Lord, send me. Can we all sing that together? Here I am. Here I am, Lord, send me. Sing that again. Here I am, Lord, send me. So as we sing this song, I want you guys to be aware that the Holy Spirit is here. Even the moment you sat down, you're thinking, oh, we're going to sing some upbeat. Nope. We're going to sing a song about service and letting our hearts be conditioned for God to send us this year through service wherever he wants us to do. Because he's the one who gets to make those calls. He's the one who has a vision for his kingdom, and we're just a part of it. Amen? So let's sing together. If it's bandaging the broken or washing filthy feet, 
Here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree. Here I am, Lord, send me. Oh, and if I'm poor, if I'm wealthy, I'll serve you just the same. Let's sing that together. Here I am. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to praise if I am, Lord, yeah, send me. If I know my how I love, let my life reflect how much I love you. I love you. And before you even ask, oh, my answer will be yes, because I truth cuts like an arrow I'll say it anyway let's all sing together here I am Lord send me if it means that they'll reject me Lord I will still obey here I am Lord send me if I know Our hearts are open, our minds are open to you. And when I'm standing in your glory, I'll be glad I chose to say. Let's sing that. And here I am, Lord, send me. And well done, good and faithful. I live to hear you say. Here I am, Lord, send me, sing it again. Here I am, Lord, send me, sing it again. Here I am, Lord, send whatever you want to do, God. Here I am, Lord, send me. And if I Let's sing that one more time. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Sing it again. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Just the voices. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. Send me. 
your people ready for you. And here I am, Lord, send me. Let's clap our hands to Jesus. Let's see, it all comes down. It all comes down to this. What you require of me. Love my neighbor as myself. And you above all things. Have just leave. Love mercy. Walk humbly with you, God. down it all comes down to this to be your hands and feet good news to all the world the truth will set us free had just sleep love mercy walk humbly with you God oh If you believe it, sing it out. Walk on me. Love mercy. Love mercy. Walk on me. With you, God, in all things. In all things. Oh, in all ways. Walk on me. With you, God. This is why it's beauty for ashes this morning to dance in. Closer and closer, the kingdom is closer and closer. Beauty for ashes this morning to dance in. Closer and closer, the kingdom of heaven. Years from now, years from now, we'll see the fruit our hands have sown. Faith just like a seed. Come on, as we play, let's clap our hands together. Come on, let's sing our marching orders. Act justly. Oh. Justly, love mercy, walk humbly with you, God, in all things, in all things, in all ways, walk humbly with you, God. Come on, sing that again. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with you, God. It's all for this beauty, beauty for ashes this morning to dance in. Closer and closer, yeah. the, the kingdom of heaven. it's beauty, beauty for ashes this morning to dance in. Closer and closer, come on, let's sing about his kingdom that's coming. Beauty for ashes this morning to dance in. Closer and closer, the kingdom of heaven. It's beauty for ashes, morning to dance in. Closer and closer, the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, when you sing songs like that, which thank you to these amazing people who just fire us up every Sunday morning. When you sing songs like that, it's like, ooh, God's asking a lot of me, right? But the beauty about what God asks of us is that he doesn't leave us stranded, making us do it alone. He's right here with us. And I wore my favorite shirt today. It's Jesus over everything. And I, can I tell you, I want to live a life that Jesus is more important to me than anything. However, 
I fell at that every day. There's something else that grabs my attention. There's other things that I put more a bigger priority on. And so every day is a day of grace, and you just do with what you can where you're at in the moment. And that's what this year of service is all about. And so now we're going to spend some time in prayer. And so I know this room is filled with heartache, pain, joy, praise. We're carrying it all in here this morning. But our God is so big that he holds it all with us. So would you pray with me? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, you are so good. And Father, we can't even comprehend the magnitude of who you are. And so, Father, on, be on behalf of myself and my brothers and sisters here, Lord, I just cry out in repentance and ask for forgiveness. Lord, because I don't put you in the position that you should be in in my life all the time. Lord, I don't serve my neighbor as myself all the time. Lord, I don't open up your word and dig in to get to know you like I should. And Father, sometimes I think that my ways are better than yours. But Father, the beauty of January is like a turning of a page, a clean slate. And for us, we're turning that page to you and our hands are open, Lord. And we want to be all about you. But Father, we need you to help us. Father, we need you to coach us, to guide us. And maybe, Lord, we need you to pull us a little bit. But Father, we're expectant for this year. We're going to see people come to know you. We're going to see lives transformed and changed. We're going to make an impact all around the world. In your name, in your name alone. So Father, as we gather together today, as we lean in with all of our broken pieces, all of our insecurities, all of our doubts, As we carry all of our joy and our praise to you too, Father, we're just here saying, yes, send me. May today be a new day for all of us that we just say, yes, Lord, we're going to trust you and believe that you are who you say you are. So, Father, this morning we just worship and honor you. And we're tuning our ears and our hearts and our minds to what you have for us today because we're excited because our lives have been changed by you and we don't want to be selfish and keep that to ourselves so use us Lord clean us up help us see what we need to see and we're going to praise you forever and it's in the beautiful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You all can be seated. Um, it's just amazing. And um, you always look around when you go to the store, when you go other places, and you just wonder, do people know how much they're loved by God? And I'm wondering if some of you in this room really know how much God loves you. Um, as being a part of a church family, we have the opportunity to pray for each other. And there's some praises and some major concerns that we have this morning. And so as you're praying this week for our, our families, um, we want to lift up Lauren Smith's sister, Emily. Um, her boyfriend slash fiance, they were in plans to get married, um, was tragically killed in a car accident. Um, so we need to really rally around that family, pray for them. Richard Smith came home from the hospital um, and 
pray for them as they're trying to discern next steps for care um, for him. Young Matthew's surgeries went went well this week, so we're thankful. He's a he's a brand new guy. It's really interesting to hear that story. And then we had a beautiful baby has been born from from Nick and Taylor and Hayes. There's a picture, baby Hayes. And so with that, we celebrate birthdays this week. We've got Christopher Kearns, Ken Henderson, and Bill Echo. And then our young ones are Hugh, Baylor, Charlotte, Kenley, Haley, and Savannah. So we just celebrate that God loved you. And he knew that his creation and his world would not be complete without you in it. And so we celebrate with you this morning. And so now as we kind of go into generosity You know, it's always amazing what God does with what we have because truly it's all his and he allows us to be a part of it. And so, you know, last year was the year of discipleship and don't think you're off the hook. You're not. We're digging in. There's more to Jesus to know. So you still have the opportunity to participate in Right Now Media. That's a resource for you that's completely free. There's all kinds of studies, talks on there if you're having a hard time and dealing with grief, anger, whatever. You can go on there for that, and it's a great resource for kids. But that's just a, a gift from the discipleship team to you all for you, for you to dig in wherever you are because you travel, you're busy, life's crazy, right? But God's Word's consistent. And um, we've got the family ministry team. Today is really exciting. I think we've got a picture our own Lynn Madden, look at that, but powerhouse kids, so pray for this, this ministry, you know, it's turned the page, it's a, it's a new day back there, we've got our very own Isabel leading that team, and she is so fired up, and we're excited uh, about what God's going to do through that, but pray for this ministry, and Victor, I think you've got a generosity moment this morning. Yes, I do. So thank you guys so much for all your continuous giving. Um, It funds fun things throughout the year. You might not know. Um, I try to get our team together quarterly for different vision nights. By the end of the year, we have a Christmas party. Um, And because of Christmas being so crazy, we have now changed it to an epiphany party, which happens after Christmas. We have a white elephant. We re-gift all the things we got over Christmas we didn't want, and we give it to each other. Um, So it's always a fun time. Um, So... um, Uh, We had a special game that was just too good not to share, and it was called New Life Church Christmas American Idol, okay? So, yes, it is. So we, 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 got, we put everybody into teams, and they had to compose an original Christmas song. And then they had to perform it right here on this very stage for the rest of the team. So there was three teams that competed, okay? But we won't, we won't have time for one. You can come with me later. I'll show you the other videos. Um, I did get permission to share Team Joy's uh, musical composition. They won for best musical score. Now, because it was, it was videoed on my camera and uh, my phone and because I'm laughing the whole time you won't miss the lyrics so I I got the lyrics for you and I'm going to read them really quickly so you guys don't miss a a thing it's called new life Christmas I'm going to tell you about a new life Christmas we got lights on the building we got lights on the tree when pastor Mike preaches it brings us to our knees pretty strong opening right we got people with faith all over this place sharing hope and love and grace Best of all, we got a baby boy bringing us joy. So you're going to experience their original music composition. It's made up of John Cafaza, Kelly Crow, Lori Epps, and Rodney. Enjoy. Rodney Orcutt, enjoy.
So it's not all business, right? It's not all business. Um, but with that, I want to invite you also this year, if you have musical talent, if you always wanted to sing up here and maybe, um, please be, uh, please have musical talent. But um, I'll <laughs> preface that. If you have a, if you, if you um, have a musical instrument talent, if you um, are just have been hesitant, maybe you're still checking things out. It's not hard, guys. Just come talk to me. I want as many of new lifers um, as a, a, Isabel's not allowed on the team. Um, <laughs> I want it to be um, something where we have a family time every Wednesday and Sunday. It is a ministry, so I want you guys to be a part of that ministry. If you are interested, my door is always open. Please find me. Send me an email. Um, this year, this is the year you could be up here playing and singing with us, and I, that invitation is open. Love you guys. That's awesome. And don't worry. If you do not have musical talent, there are plenty of opportunities for you to serve in the church, so you are not left out. So do not worry. And I don't, I haven't seen that happen before on other teams, but I'm sure teams could get excited and do something like that too, so you'll have that, that fun. Um, but for generosity, today is the last Sunday that you can give to the Christmas Eve offering. And if you would like to do that, please just make sure that you make a note on there that that's what you'd like it for. If you're in the room and want to give in the baskets, there's envelopes. But to remind you, the Christmas Eve offering is going to help with the Caroline Miller Memorial Fund, which is helping ladies about domestic violence. And we had a goal for $5,000, um, and the Lord has done it more than that. And so we'll wait to get the official total when all of that comes in. But just thank you for the ways that you give. Thank you for the ways that you serve. And this morning we're going to hear um, scripture but before we do, I need to tell you this story um, because I'm just wrecked by it. I was in a space last week, and we were talking about Scripture. And there was a verse of Scripture that was read. And it was read in several different languages by individuals. Started with English and went through, I think it was a country in Africa and... Korea was represented in some small tribes with the amount of people. And then there was one tribe of people that came up on the screen. But the microphone was empty. And there was just a spotlight on the microphone. Because anyone with that language does not have the word of God translated so that they can read it. And I don't know about you, but my house is full of Bibles. I have pretty ones. I have study ones. I've got color-coded ones. And if I'm honest, they probably collect more dust than they get read. So people, I'm begging you. You have a privilege to hold the Word of God and read it. And when you open that word of God and you pray first and say, Lord, would you speak to me? He will. So this morning, we're going to hear scripture. We're going to hear from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And I pray you never forget the opportunity that you're receiving this morning, not only to be in a house of worship freely, but to also hear what God has to say to you through his word. A prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. 
Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Well, friends, um, my name is Mike Maxwell. I'm the pastor here, but um, basically all that means is I'm the spiritual spiritual janitor. Uh, As as you can see, we are are all uh, ministers, and uh, it's so good to be in ministry together. And I'm going to just get a little bit closer to the fire. I noticed that's what you all decided to do this morning. Good job. Way to get out of bed and and decide you were going to come and get a little closer to the fire. But um, the beginning of a, a year in January, uh, when that, that calendar turns over, it becomes an opportunity for us to perhaps mind the gap. And when I say mind the gap, what I mean is um, maybe you, like me, have taken some time just to be a little bit reflective about the past year and anticipate a little bit about the coming year. Looking back at the past year and seeing hopes and goals and dreams that that may have come to fruition or didn't come to fruition, right? And and we recognize that gap between what what we hoped was going to happen in 2022 but didn't happen in 2022, but what we still hope could happen in 2023, and so we kind of come to this season of, of reflection, of, of turning uh, into a new calendar year, and I just want us to be uh, aware that you may not be the only one minding the gap, the gap between who you aspire to be and who you recognize who you are at this current time and season of life. I recognize that for me, I want to become more than I presently am. That's, that's just the reality. As I move into 2023, I recognize I want to become more than I presently am. If that is you, would you just say that with me? I want to become more than I presently am. And now if you're, you're confident that that's true about you, say it with some confidence. Uh, say it loudly with me. I want to become more than I presently am. And so I think as we begin this year, if, if that's you then I think you're in touch with what I would call holy dissatisfaction. You, you sense that God has some aspirations for you in your life and you have not yet made it. You're not yet complete. God is not done with you yet. I know I'm a work in progress. Every time I pass a construction site, I say, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy in my life. I'm a work in progress. And I love how um, J.D. Walt in uh, his book, Wake Up, he puts it this way. He talks about um, uh, kind of the second half of the gospel. The first half of the gospel is, is becoming a Christ follower, making that, that decision. And we know that's a, that's a process in itself. But the second half of the gospel is recognizing that's not just a once-in-a-lifetime decision. That's a daily multiple times a day decision all along the way. And it's the process of God transforming us into who God longs for us to be. The fancy uh, theological word for that is sanctification. And um, the process of becoming a follower of Jesus is that second half of the gospel. And too many times we focus just on the first half, which is just getting into that relationship with God. But it's so important that we focus on this second half of the gospel of allowing God to transform us into becoming more like his son Jesus, more loving, more forgiving, more gracious, more filled with joy, more compassionate, and so on and so on and so on. Too many times in our lives as followers of Jesus, we get stuck in what we might say Romans 7. I encourage you to go home and read Romans 7. In it, Paul, who is um, an early missionary who wrote many of the letters in our New Testament, he writes and says, you know, there are things that I know that I don't want to do, but I do them anyway. And there are things that I know that I want to do, the good that I know I ought to do, I don't do that. And some of us just get stuck in our habits and our hurts and our hang-ups and our insecurities. And we just get stuck 
in Romans 7. But the beauty of Romans 7 is to realize that Christ has overcome the power of sin and death. Through the power of his resurrection, we are no longer chained and held and bound by sin in our lives. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can give us the ability to overcome our hurts, our hang-ups, and all the sin, the sin that is in our lives. We ought to be a Romans 8 people. Romans 8 begins with, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so as we move into 2023, and if you have decided that you want to be a follower of Jesus, let's lean into Romans 8, the freedom that Christ gives us and the opportunity to live the life God calls for us to live. And what kind of life does God want us to live? Well, Jesus kind of boiled that down for us. Essentially, if we were to move into 2023, my hope uh, would be what I think is God's hope, and that would be that we would be Christ-centered and people-focused. Christ-centered and people-focused all year long. What if we were able to do that every day of our lives? Jesus was being asked by some religious leaders. They said, you know, all these laws, you know, they're hundreds of them. Jesus, which is the most important? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pretty simple. Love God, love others. Be Christ-centered and people-focused. Friends, what if we were to spend 2023 just just getting ourselves set and in that position where we were Christ-centered and other people focused. I know uh, we've been talking about over the past few weeks, and Will can talk about the entire year, that this is the year of serving. But like uh, Rebecca mentioned earlier today, that doesn't mean we're done with discipleship. Last year was the year of discipleship, and we're going to build on that year of discipleship. We talked about this. Find yourself on the journey. Find, find where are you in your walk with Christ, is this new to you? Have you been on this journey sometime? Wherever it is that you are, take that next step. Because we, we talked about the def definition of a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ, committed to gathering with the body of Christ, growing to be more like Jesus, and going to serve Jesus in ministry to the world. We are not done with discipleship. We want to talk about serving as it relates to being a disciple because disciples serve. Plain and simple, disciples serve. So in this year of being Christ-centered and people-focused, I really want to begin with this prayer that Paul prayed for the people of Ephesus. And it's going to be my prayer for you and for me all year long. Sometimes we find other people who pray things better than us. Amen? <laughs> Paul did a good one here. So I'm just going to kind of steal that in good Christian love and pray it for you guys. You okay with that? Yeah. In verse 16, just to skip in a few verses from what was read, it says, I pray out of his glorious riches that he may what? Strengthen you with what? Power through who? His spirit in your where? inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the what? Power together with all of the Lord's who? Oh, how you feel about that? That's you guys. To grasp, to know, to experience more than just a feeling. To grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the what? Love of Christ. And to know, not just know, but to experience. The difference between we talked about knowing honey is sweet and tasting honey and knowing it's sweet. Oh, there's a difference. To know this love that what? Surpasses knowledge. That you may be, in these last ten words, friends... <laughs> Mind 
blowing, mind blowing, that you may be filled to the measure of all, read the last part with me, fullness of God. Woo! Anybody ready for that? To be filled to the full measure of all the fullness of God. Have you arrived there yet? Yes or no? Yes, I know I have not yet fully arrived. There is a deeper work that God longs to do in me. And oh God, I'm ready for it. Do it in me. Become filled, grasp to experience beyond knowledge and feeling. And this happens when God strengthens you with the power through his Holy Spirit in your inner being. And we can't do it alone. It's going to be a journey with all the Lord's people. There's a peace that we do as individuals, but there's a peace that cannot be supplemented other than by gathering together as the people of God. Whether that's in small groups or serving or out in the community and Christian conversation here in worship, we must gather with other people. The Christian journey is never meant to be a walk in isolation. And so, not only are we going to be Christ-centered, but we're going to be people focused in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. I love how it puts it this way. It says, so then, just as you received, who? Christ Jesus as Lord, as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and read the last part with me, overflowing with thankfulness, overflowing flowing with thankfulness. This is that, that, oh my goodness, God, you have done so much in my life. It is overflowing. I can't help but be other people-centered. As Rebecca said earlier, you know, we, we can't just hold all this stuff for ourselves. Oh my goodness, thank you, Lord, for grace, love, mercy, and let it just flow into the lives of other people. It must be for other people. And I love how um, J.D. Walt put it in, in his book, uh, Wake Up, because I'm trying to wake up. I don't know about you. I'm trying to wake up so that God can do in me. He said, what if the path to deeper is not about more Christian activity? What if deeper is about more what? Receptivity. Woo, that's deep right there. But he goes on saying, our maturity in the Holy Spirit will never exceed the point to which we have received Christ, how? As Lord. Lord meaning the one calling the shots, right? The owner and master of us, the one we serve, which is not about more striving, but deeper what? Surrender. A year, 2023, where we just continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper in surrender. Growing deeper does not mean going higher, it means going downward, but Deeper also means the deeper the cup, the more God can fill. Can I get an amen? We might settle for a little thimble when we could have a cup or a tank or just a reservoir or an ocean of God's love and mercy in our lives. Friends, what if we were to begin each day, we begin every worship service, just praying the prayer, Lord Jesus, would you meet with me? As we did today, Lord Jesus, would you meet with us? Wherever two or more are gathered in your name, there you are with us. And so I know God is here and present. God was here and present prior to us arriving. What if that were to be our prayer every day? Lord Jesus, would you meet with me? What we need is the presence of God in our lives. In the Bible, fire is that metaphor that is used for the very presence of God. Over and over and over, God's purifying and holy, loving presence is described as fire. 
Just a quick run through. There was the burning bush with Moses that was representing God. There was the pillar of fire where God led his people out of slavery and through the wilderness and into the promised land. There was God descending upon Mount Sinai in fire. There was God's presence who came to the tabernacle when it was a mobile temple and then a, a solid stationary temple. The presence of God filled the place, the Shekinah glory. It was so thick people couldn't even walk in and move, but he came as a flame. And then in the temple, there's this perpetual flame that continually burns on the altar. And it's a visible sign of the presence of God and, the, and how the people are to always be ready to make an offering for God. Because fire was used in offering to burn the offering. And then the, the offering of incense as well. And the fire of the Lord fell at Mount Carmel when when Elijah said, you know, who are you going to serve? Is it going to be Baal or is it going to be God? Call down on your gods and see if they respond. And then when they didn't, he said, are you ready for me to call down on mine? And he called down on God Almighty and God rained down fire and consumed the offering. The fire of the Lord represents the word of God, the zeal of the saints, the Holy Spirit. They're all described as fire. John Uh, the Baptist predicted that Jesus was going to come and baptize with the Holy Spirit in fire. When the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, it came in the form of the tongues of fire. In the end times, God discloses himself as one who is coming in fire. Friends, fire is an example of the, the very presence of the purifying, holy love of God. And it can burn us up and it can cleanse us. It's powerful and it's dangerous. It's how God uses his approval and demonstrates destruction. We experience the light of direction. We experience the warmth of affirmation. And we know that God can purify and cleanse our hearts. That's why we begin not only this year but every day with repentance. Oh God, forgive me for what I have done and what I know I'm about to do. God, through his Holy Spirit, can transform our lives. That is the absolute amazing power of God. There's a story about John Wesley. He is the founder of Methodism began a a revival movement that swept across the the United States uh, because it started in Europe when when, um, the Anglican Church was dying and a new movement and a revival began out of this. But it didn't begin until there was a revival of John Wesley's heart. And here's the story of, of that. One evening, he reluctantly attended a meeting at Aldersgate. You ever been to a meeting, ever gone to church reluctantly? I have. You ever gone to life group reluctantly? You ever served reluctantly? And then out of your obedience, God showed up and God was faithful because that's just who God is. And so when John Wesley showed up, someone was reading um, Luther's preface to the epistle to Romans. (laughs) Just imagine walking, deciding you're going to stop by in a church and you walk in and they're reading the introduction to a book of the Bible, right? You think, man, I should have come back a little bit. About 845, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warm. This is from his journal. I felt I did trust Christ, Christ alone for my salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. And friends, maybe you've had that experience. John Wesley is just one person whom the fire, the very presence, the purifying, holy love of God just transformed his life and assured him that he was a child of God. And then we read in, in Acts how the church was set ablaze at Pentecost and there was this, it initiated this unstoppable movement that has swept across the globe throughout history and you and I are sitting here today 
because that movement has not stopped. And friends, as Jesus said, the gates of Hades will not prevail. The movement of God that you're a part of will continue into all eternity. God will prevail. And this kind of change that can happen within us, I uh, was at a, a conference earlier, or last fall, uh, called New Room Conference, and um, I meant to type this quote in, but David Thomas was one of the speakers, and he says, the church is going from casual to combustion in a world that is falling apart. No awakening ever came from strategic planning. And this is where he got his doctorate. But always came from planning. Always Prayer. <laughs> there you go. Messed it up on purpose for, you know, uh, em- emphasis. No awakening ever came from strategic planning but from prayer. That's not to say there's not a place for strategic planning. There absolutely is. But strategic planning without prayer, we might be about something other than God's will. And we don't want to be about that. So, this, this idea that God's power transforms our lives is just um, all throughout the year. I, I just want to make this kind of statement and phrase that it's a metaphor for do you want to get lit? No, I... Understand the context from which I say this, okay? <laughs> Anybody who want to get lit? I am standing in a worship center, am I not? Okay, I'm not in a bar. There are many who would understand and think that I'm talking about consuming mass amounts of, of alcohol that would lead to debauchery, as the Bible says, which is not good, right? But oh, if we were to get lit by the power of of the Holy Spirit. Anybody ready to get lit? Well, that God would light our hearts here at the beginning of 2023 and forget status quo and move into what God has for us. Friends, let's get lit. Let's get lit. Luke 12, verse 49 says, I have come this is Jesus speaking, to bring fire on the earth and oh, how I wish it were already kindled. We don't start the fire. It's not a REM song. We didn't start the fire. No, we don't start the fire. I mean, my autocorrect over and over is underlining this thing and it's wanting me to correct it saying we didn't start the fire. Well, that's true, but I want to say we don't start the fire. We don't start the fire. Only God can light the flame in us through the Holy Spirit. It's not an exercise to try harder, to manipulate uh, energy or to manipulate God or try and manufacture energy that we don't have, manipulate God into performing in a certain way. No, God sends the fire. We can make our lives combustible. We can build the fire by laying the kindling, by adding the fuel, and by trusting for the blazing touch of God. And oh, that we would be desperate for the touch of the Holy Spirit to ignite our lives, ignite our church, ignite our families, ignite our neighborhoods, ignite our city, ignite our country, ignite our world. Not just this generation, but all the generations that are to follow. What if we were to be bold in 2023 and pray that prayer? Oh God, start in me. And every week we gather together in boldness to believe that the Spirit of God can, can fan back into flames the fire that Jesus came to bring on earth. And when we seek to spread it, we become the answer to Jesus' longing. Did you pick up on that? Oh, how I long that that fire would be kindled. When we show up to serve, when we show up for worship, when we show up to gather in Christian conversation, that fire is burning. And we are adding kindling. And we are then the literal answer to the longing 
in the heart of our Savior. Don't you want to be that? I know I do. But it begins right here, right now, with you and with me, responding to what God has already done through his son Jesus. Back to that um, holy dissonance that you had, the, the gap between who you believe God wants you to be and who you are. I'm not sure how big a gap you feel that is. I'm not sure what you're experiencing in your life. Maybe you're experiencing an emptiness. Maybe you're experiencing a dryness. Maybe you're feeling a frustration, a discouragement, even a depression in this season of life. Friends, that emptiness can only be filled by God. That discouragement and discontentment can only be resolved by God. The dissatisfaction can only be satisfied by God. The discouragement can only be encouraged by God. But because of the work of the Holy Spirit, fires are starting everywhere. They're starting in people's hearts, in people's homes, in people's communities. It's all over the world. So maybe today is that, that first time when whether online or in person, you're, you're just saying, you know what? I've been thinking about this a long time, but it's just time to step closer to the fire. And I'm in. Light my heart on fire by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're recognizing that dissatisfaction, that gap between who you are and who God wants you to be and you're not satisfied by simply being saved by sin and death, but you desperately want to be restored into the image of God. That you're more loving like a son, more gracious. But maybe, maybe you've already made that decision in your life. And yet you recognize that the flame has kind of burned down to kind of like a little pilot light. And in some ways, what you thought was roaring at one time is now just a small little flame. And you think, oh, God wants so much more than just this little flame. Well, then I have good news for you. God has awakened that realization in you today. That's God at work in your life, being, becoming aware and wanting you to become aware that he can stoke the flame again. And maybe you are currently in this season of life just raging as this, you feel like campfire and just looking for more fuel. God's going to provide it this year for you. You're done going through the motions as a family and as a church. And now you're ready to know an encounter with Jesus that doesn't stop with where you're at. I love how David Thomas said it during that, that um, conference. He said, an encounter with Jesus that doesn't lead to serving is not really an encounter. And some of us need to hear that. We've been all about ourselves and our relationship with God, and we've been trying so hard to be Christ-centered, and God says, okay, it's time to be people-focused. It's not all about you. It's about the kingdom I long to launch through this, this globe to heal the hurts, to break the bonds of sin so that every area of society can flourish. So 2023, Christ-centered, people-focused, and friends, you can't start a fire unless you first get lit. You just can't. You can't start a fire unless you first get lit. Before we can pass along the fire, we need to get lit. Turn to somebody next to you and say, get lit. Turn to somebody on the other side and say, it's time to get lit. <laughs> say it out loud with me, let's get lit. Let's get lit. <laughs> I know it's crazy. But what if that was our rally cry through the year? And walking down the hall, you just said, keep it lit. Keep it lit. You lit? Keep it lit. 
And then we serve from a relationship with God, not for a relationship with God, knowing that God already loves us. More on this later. Made to serve, but we've got to know our why first, or it's going to be drudgery and duty, and we're going to be living out of expectation, and it's going to be empty, and it's not going to last. But 1 John 4, verse 19 says, We love because he first loved us. First. Well, we just spent weeks talking about that in the incarnation or the coming of God in the form of humanity through Jesus. God always takes the initiative, and it's up to us to respond. And so anything that we do, there's no pat on the back for us. It's just living out of the fact that God has loved us. And may that flood into the lives of other people. Jesus is the fire bringer. We are the fire builder. Oh, come Holy Spirit and kindle within us the fire of your love. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks for your Son for your spirit, that you have not left us alone, that you have created in us a hunger and a desire and a thirst for you. Because God, more than anything and above everything, we need you. Forgive us for the ways when we have just tried to do this on our own, We've just tried to be good people and we've tried to just heap one good deed after another. God, we know that's not what it's about. So come Holy Spirit, through your power and light your flame within us. Help us not be satisfied by anything but you. Help us lean into that anticipation of what you can do. And God, for my friends here who today are deciding and they're they're feeling a longing in their heart, whether in person or, or online, whether it's Today, they're experiencing this, or sometime during the week, or even years from now, they've, they've downloaded this message, and, and now they're, they're saying, yes, this is the time. God, I pray that they might give their lives completely and wholly to you, that everything about their lives would change. God, we do pray that you would rekindle that flame that has perhaps died out for many. And may today be the day where we say 2023 is not going to be just any other year. And so it begins right here, right now with us. And may you use us to spread the flame of your fire across the earth. In your name and for your glory, we pray. Amen. Friends, we have the opportunity to enjoy a holy meal it's a sacred meal, and uh, if you uh, did not get some um, elements on your way in, if you'll just raise your hand, somebody's going to bring some by to you in just a moment, and I'll explain how to go about this um, in just a few moments. But I want to give you an, a little explanation of what this is about, because it may be new to you. This is a spiritual meal for the spiritual journey, because we're not just in this physical, material world. And in this meal, God reminds us of what he did in the past, that our sins are are forgiven. In the present, we have strength to live the journey God calls us to live. And he's pointing us to the future where we're going to gather together at a heavenly banquet. And he's saying, here's a little foretaste of what you're going to experience for all eternity if you decide to gather around my table. So who can gather around the table? Only the people who have memorized every book of the Bible. No, that is not true. Only those who pray every day. No. Only those who have done a hundred good deeds over the past week. No. If it's your desire to live with God and to the best of your ability at peace with others, then this meal is for you. By taking this meal, you're kind of leaning into saying, I want to be a follower of Jesus. 
And I know I don't have what it takes. I'm going to lean on God. I need some nourishment to help me do that that only God can provide. And so in this meal, we call it sacred and holy because we really believe that beyond words that I can use to express, we will experience the real presence of Christ in our midst as we commune with God and with each other. And so it was on the night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took bread and he gave thanks to God for it and he broke it. And he gave it to those who were with him and he said, take, eat, this is my body, it's broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God for it and he gave it to those who were with him and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon every person gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and juice. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might in turn be the body and blood of Christ for the world, representing you in all that we say, think, and do. And God, we begin this recognizing we are not worthy that we are unholy, and that we stand in need of forgiveness. And so we ask for your forgiveness and confess to you where we have fallen short. And yet we accept and to receive your forgiveness and the right standing that you give us because of your Son. He is the only name, that name that is above every name, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. This is the only name we lean on and trust. And we pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, amen. If you have one of these, there are two uh, films. If you'll peel back that first film, you'll recognize that it, it reveals to you a, a wafer. The top film, when you pull it back, will reveal a wafer. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. And then you can pull back that second film, which will reveal the juice. Friends, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink for the forgiveness of sins. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. We thank you for the ways that you give us strength. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the opportunity to be your people and to live for you. And we pray that all that we say, think, and do would honor and glorify you. Thank you for the chance to begin again new, fresh, right here, right now, today. And we know it's because of Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Now, um, I invite you to find your candle. And if you did not pick up a candle on their way in and you would like one, just raise your hand and somebody's going to bring you a, a candle. Some of you all are thinking, what in the world are we doing with candles? I'm about to tell you. Um, many of you know that on Christmas Eve, we get to light the Christ candle. And, um, to, and we often, at the end of a Christmas Eve service, we'll, we'll take a candle and we'll, we'll light our candle from that Christ candle. And then we, we pass that flame around. And what I want us to do today is just be very mindful. Hopefully I've caught you off guard. And you're like, is this Christmas Eve? No, it's not Christmas Eve. But the principle applies. If you feel like you do not have this flame or you long for this flame to glow brighter or the world has snuffed it out or whatever it is, it's our voluntary decision to invite Christ into our lives which we say, I'm unlit, 
God, you got to get me lit through the power of your Holy Spirit. And it's only once we have been lit by the Holy Spirit that then God can use our lives to, if others choose, get lit. So my question to you today is, do you want to get lit? If so, then make the voluntary decision to allow God to light your life. And so if that's you, then we're going to come through the aisle. And if that's you, then take your unlit candle and dip it into the lit candle, which comes from Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's sing together. Let's stand and sing and worship. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place, no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Here in your love, here in your love, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, than here in your love, here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control, I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Yeah, yeah. I see no place. No place I would rather be. 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 Here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want 
more time, just a voice. Let's sing that. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. One more time. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. Church, do you see this light? You were created to reflect this light wherever you go and whatever you do. That's how you're created. And there are things that are going to come up that dim that light. But would you look around this space? These people are here to encourage you. They're here to help you light this back up. Because God is faithful and God is continuous and there's nothing that you could ever do to separate you from him because he's walking in the heart with you and so for new life this team that he's put together to serve you all as your staff we're committed to challenge you this year we're committed to speak truth we're continuing and in, in in pressing in to anything that God asks us to do. And we have a variety of options for you to do that. And, and we're all eager for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you as well. But we have life groups and we have programs and we've got Bible studies and all kinds of stuff to make God's word come alive. We've got all kinds of ways for you to serve. And like Mike was talking in his sermon and um, just for a minute, can we just say thank you to our pastor? Mike, that was powerful. We're very blessed to have a pastor who is actively seeking after the Lord. And you can see the fire of Christ burning on his face. But with that serving, what he talked about is you serve because of who God is to you and what he's done in your life. The reason that we have gushers in this place is not to keep you out of service. It's the opportunity for you to hold that door wide open for somebody else to experience what it is you experience here. We have a children's ministry back there and a youth ministry on Sunday nights. The reason we have those things and the reason we need you to serve in them because those kids and those youth need Jesus and you get to tell them about it. So we're gonna get involved this year and we're gonna come alongside you in your communities and you and your families because it's all about Jesus. It's Jesus over everything. And so next week, we get an awesome opportunity to participate in a ministry called Rise Against Hunger. And if you've never had the opportunity, oh, you're in for a treat. It's amazing what all happens and all ages can serve together. And so you need to sign up ahead of time to make sure we get all the paperwork filled out um, correctly. And after service today, we need some help setting up this space. So. It can run as smooth and efficiently as possible, but pack in thousands and thousands of meals in a short span. It's amazing what God can do. So be involved with that. And the only way I know to send you all out today is to read that scripture again, the prayer from Ephesians. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And verse 20 goes on to say, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and amen. Let's stay lit this week, people. We got work to do.
set a fire, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more, more time. You, Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more Last one. Set of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more.